Welcome back. Now that I've made the Matchbox Fairy Sea Fox, it's time to make the Siskin. And here we go. Oh, green and a bad silver. I'm making a mess of this. I always do. We have the instructions leaflet, which is folded up in the box after many decades. Oops. What do you reckon? This has got to be mid-70s, hasn't it? And I, I can just see some words there. 1974. Didn't think Matchbox had started that early. But there we are. I don't know why at the moment I've bought or encountered, got myself tangled up in several biplanes. And they are murder. Getting the sets of wings to sit at the right angle and not roll around is very hard, I find. That's me, personally. Oops. So I put the camera on a tripod and I'm still rubbish. Never mind. It's all about fun. I say that every time. And... No real painting instructions on the paperwork. It's all on the box. The box, which I threw on the floor. So let's have a quick look at the colours on that one. <clears throat> there we go. Mainly silvers, as was often the case in the interwar period. Don't really know much about this aircraft, so um, I might look a little bit up. I don't really know its dates. It's... Oh, there they are on the box, 1928. At least that's when it was in service. And then 1931, the next one. Here's the torso, you might call it. Given that I'm not a fan of the word fuselage. Uh, here's the torso of the Armstrong Whitworth Siskin 3A by Matchbox. You can see the logo in the background. And I've just put one of those titchy glues where you can see it to give you an idea of the size. So it is very small. Which in its own way is impressive. It's all gone together very nicely. Um, let me find something to point with, as usual. This cowling sits over these struts. The struts are on a little plate. The plate hinges into the adjacent plate with the other struts that sits over the top that was great fun to do um, so it's looking good I like this look at that smart little engine and a lower wing what more could you ask for on a Thursday morning superb um, I'm in a slightly different location on a different table and there's a lot of shine. <laughs> the little Siskin is looking very smart. Imagine if it didn't have a top wing. Obviously the lower wing's way too small, but there it would be. A tiny little interwar aeroplane. Uh, I haven't a clue what's next. Oh, I've got to paint the struts black. That kind of thing. And then, the drama of getting the top wing on. I don't know why I keep making these biplanes, but never mind. Progress has been made. I was going to uh, show the moment when the upper wing was put on, but not the wheels. But it's all a bit integrated, so I ended up having, or deciding it would be best to do them all as one. So we've ended up uh, kind of missing that section somewhat but getting this. So here's the aeroplane in its most, with all the parts on but in its most sort of basic form. But this one's all gone very well and I don't put that down to me, I put that down to Matchbox uh, sort of design skills. This has gone well and it's down to Matchbox, I give them all credit. So I don't know who's got this, the moulds for this these days. So if you see 
one of these going second hand as I have. Um, get it. It is a satisfying model to make, particularly if you're not confident about doing biplanes. This one will boost things incredibly. So there it is, so far so good. Uh, so next, transfers, oh, I'm going to stay with that phrase, and then a little bit of tidying up with the, the paintwork. I'm always disappointed with silver ones, you can get some good silvers these days. It always starts off on the sprue very shiny, but by the time I've manhandled it, it's gone down to looking like a cheap aluminium saucepan. Um, I'm sure there are clever ways of dealing with that, but I'll address that later. Here is the Matchbox Siskin, and it's complete. Uh, I didn't lose any parts, I didn't break any off. The, um, <clears throat> the sort of tail skid is a little bit wonky now, but that can be sorted out. Um, and it's looking rather nice. It's a very, very uh, neat and tidy, you know, there's that word neat again. It's a very sort of simple, compact, straightforward aeroplane. It's a very good model. It's very sturdy, particularly for a biplane. And um, it's sort of an interesting addition to any interwar uh, collection of aircraft which, weirdly, I seem to be into. So this is a good one. And it's probably the best I've done so far, all things considered. Um, I'm pleased with that. Good model, nice little aircraft, and I made it reasonably well. So slow progress. I've got plenty more biplanes stacked up and ready to go, so uh, maybe I'll have to um, do a kind of review of several of them, put them all together and discuss their pros and cons. What's interesting about this one is that um, the Mark I was actually being designed in 1918 and it came out in 1919, so it's virtually a First World War aircraft. Anyway, um, I might make, next, I might make the Heinschel 123A by Airfix. And I always thought it was a Heinkel, since I made it when I was about seven, I suppose, maybe eight. Um, so I've laboured under that misapprehension for over 40 years. So that might be the next one.